the story begins with a prestigious educational institution, where upon entering, Kagurazu Kamido, the protagonist, is seen standing out on a stage in front of a number of girls. They raise their hands to ask him questions. However, to understand how Kamido came to be in this position, we go back in time a few hours. Kamido rests at his desk, drowsy, until a friend of his wakes him up. The friend asks him to buy tea, reminding him that he also intended to go to the shop. At that moment, sturdy men burst in and abduct him in a limousine, taking him away from the school. In the vehicle, the men show off their muscles, making Kamido uncomfortable. Arriving at his destination, he is thrown in front of a glamorous school, where a girl dressed as a maid informs him of the reasons for his arrival and invites him to follow her. The maid introduces herself as Kyuju and reveals that the institution is an exclusive academy for high-class women. Subsequently, the maid takes her to the headmistress named Kamachi and is told that female students, upon graduation, face a considerable cultural gap when interacting with the outside world, especially with people from lower social classes and, in particular, with men. Although Kamido shows surprise, he persists in questioning why he has been selected. Kyuju and Kamachi explain that they have chosen Kamido because he is an ordinary, down-to-earth person with no outstanding attributes and apparently uninterested in women, eliciting the information provided by his friend Hani, who attends school with him. Outraged, Kamido denies being a muscle fetishist, but faced with the threat of being removed and castrated to preserve the purity of the students, he relents and confirms his alleged taste for muscles to avoid drastic consequences. He is then introduced to the class. At this point, the misunderstanding about his supposed muscle fetish begins to be cleared up, revealing that his preference is actually for thighs. The first to introduce herself is the class president, a young blonde named Riaiko. After Kamido's introduction, her phone rings, which startles all the girls, as they are unfamiliar with the device and find it novel. Surprised by the mobile phone, Riaiko tells them that if the device belongs to Kamido, they must return it to her. They are all nervous, not knowing who will be in charge of the return, feeling very embarrassed about it. At that point, the delegate volunteers to do it. In a gesture that exemplifies her refined politeness, the delegate prepares a thank you letter decorated with a ribbon and places chocolates inside an elegantly decorated box to return the phone. However, due to nervous tension, when she touches the bag containing the phone, the delegate is startled to the point of almost fainting. Kamido manages to catch her just in time to prevent her from falling to the floor. At that moment, a girl runs into the classroom and takes Kamido to the school garden and tries to give him a kiss, because according to what she had been told, if she could kiss a commoner, one of her wishes would come true. However, after some struggling, Kamido convinces her that this is a lie and the girl denies having believed the myth in the first place. To which Kamido, unsure of the girl's claim, tells her that if she turns her head three times and barks, any wish will be granted. So she does. At that moment the rest of the girls arrive and mention that the girl's name is Eka and as she doesn't have much of a relationship with the other students, as they just call out to her, she runs off. Later, Kyuju shows Kamido his place of residence and his room, an exact reproduction of the original. When she notices that the room is decorated with posters of thighs, Kamido suddenly panics and runs to get rid of them to avoid any misunderstandings. Afterwards, the young woman informs him that from now on she will be his personal maid, as each student has his own maid at the academy. However, she makes it clear to him that she has no intention of doing anything for him and that at 3 o'clock in the afternoon there is a mandatory meeting to explain his arrival at the academy, which he must attend. Once she leaves and closes the door, Eika enters, visibly annoyed, reproaching Kamido for turning his head and not fulfilling her wish. Before she can slap him, she notices the contents of Kamido's room and is surprised, as she has never seen anything like this before. Eika reveals her wish to him, which is that she longs to integrate into the commoner culture to become a popular girl. Kamido replies that she doesn't need a wish to make friends, she just needs to behave normally. Eka explains that, being a straightforward person and expressing her thoughts without filters, she is afraid of being disliked by others. Despite this, she wants to have friends and a school life surrounded by classmates, so Kamido gives her a console and shows her how it works. Eka, surprised, asks him to teach her about commoner culture in order to become popular, proposing the creation of the commoners club. After some hesitation, Kamido finally accepts, filling Eka with joy. Later on, in the present Kamido is on stage in front of all the students. They ask her some trivial questions about life and the common people, and after providing some explanations about everyday life, the students show surprise and interest in the subject. Seeing the enthusiasm of her classmates, Eka is filled with joy. 
The next morning, Kamido wakes up with Kyuju by his side, since, as his maid, it is her responsibility to help him with various tasks, such as waking up and getting dressed. Kamido senses that the young girl does not like the idea of having to play the role of a maid. Later, the maid suggests using the back door of the dormitory area, which puzzles Kamido. When asked, Kyuju explains that, after the previous day's commotion, it would be prudent for him to remain unnoticed until he reaches the classroom. As he walks out of the door, he meets Eika, who, speaking loudly, attracts the attention of the other girls. Eika tells him that she always uses the back door and, seeing that he, being popular, does so too, thinks that this is what he should continue to do. Kamido reminds her that the commoners club activities start that day. At that point, he stops, noticing that their maids are following them, and proposes an exchange to Eika. He would teach her the ways of the commoners in exchange for her explaining how things work at the academy. Eika is surprised that he would ask her instead of Riaiko, and Kamido explains that the delegate is too cute and feels uncomfortable, which is not the case with Eika. At this, she gets angry and hits him. At the entrance of the classroom, they meet Riaiko, who proposes to Kamido that they should get together after class, as she wants to organize a welcome party for him. This provokes some jealousy in Eika. After a few classes, such as English and physical education, Kamido begins to gain popularity among the girls, as the men are quite different. Afterwards, she wonders where her friend is, and Riaiko asks if they are close, explaining that they can't relate too much to Eika, as she tends to be quite distant. Kamido reassures her, assuring them that they have done nothing wrong and that Eika will have her reasons. This motivates her classmates to make an effort to be friends with Eika. During the welcome party, all the girls notice the way Kamido walks. When they arrive at the table to order food, Kamido, not understanding the menu, decides to order Japanese food. Hyuju brings a pot of instant ramen to her table, which annoys her a little because of the prejudice that commoners only eat that kind of food. Riaiko asks if the peculiar aroma was coming from the food. At that moment, Kamido realizes that the girls have never tasted anything like this before. To their surprise, Kamido explains that it is a type of food that only requires hot water to cook. Opening the pot, she catches the attention of her companions as she sees the ingredients floating inside and offers them a taste. The girls accept, hand over their best utensils and Kamido gives each of them a small portion to taste. After tasting it, they are all surprised to find that they like it very much, as they have never experienced anything like it before. Elsewhere, Eika is eating alone, confessing to herself that she finds it more relaxing to enjoy her meal alone. Later, they organize a dance to celebrate Kamido's arrival at the academy. A brass band starts playing various instruments while the students participate in the dance. Riaiko, noticing that Kamido doesn't seem very enthusiastic, asks him if something is wrong. He explains that in his everyday life he doesn't often attend such events and that he doesn't know how to dance. Seeing that the girl is saddened by this realization, Kamido assures her that it is no problem and that he will try if she goes with him. Although she hesitates due to embarrassment, she finally agrees and begins to dance. However, Kamido turns out to be quite clumsy and performs strange movements, surprising the onlookers who think these are typical commoner dances. She almost makes Riaiko fall. But fortunately she manages to hold her down and they end up in a pose that closes the dance, which provokes applause from everyone present. Later, Kamido meets Eika again, who is annoyed by his tardiness. He explains that he had no choice, as they organized a welcome party for him. After that, Eika asks him to teach her all about being a commoner. While Kamido thinks about what he could teach her, she focuses on some manga on a shelf. After explaining how to read them, Eika begins to enjoy volume after volume. Given her innocence, she really believes that what happens in those books happens in reality, and that teenage commoners have superpowers. Therefore, she decides to become a psychic to gain popularity among the other girls. Kamido decides to play along a bit and teach her how to summon her powers. Later, Eika tries to test the superpowers Kamido taught him, and he pretends to have fallen under her supposed control. Believing she has stopped time, Eika taunts Kamido and, when she tries to kiss him, he reacts. He continues to pretend that he has really stopped time when she slaps him. Finally, he explains to her that all the powers are just fantasy and science fiction stories, and that the plots of the manga are not real. In the evening, Riaiko enjoys a bath and, on coming out, finds herself face to face with Kamido, both naked. After appreciating her thighs, he apologizes and leaves. After this scene, Riaiko contemplates that her only option is to marry him. The next day, Riaiko spends the day absorbed in her thoughts, imagining the future wedding she wishes to have with Kamido as she has fallen in love with him. 
Elsewhere, two fellow students are entering the laboratory of a girl called Hakua. She has several special rules, such as the inability to dress herself and the need to have the food she requests for each day of the week prepared for her. If these conditions are not met, she refuses to eat anything else. On the other hand, as part of her daily routine, Kamido is woken up by Kyuju. In addition, he receives a message from his family informing him that they now have hot springs at home. It is revealed that, in exchange for Kamido's admission to the academy, his family received a financial reward. Later, Kamido notices that no matter where she goes, whether in the lunchroom, in class or even in the bathroom, she is constantly being stared at by her classmates, which makes her uncomfortable. Then she finds a moment to rest on a bench in the school garden and notices a girl writing on the ground in front of a statue. As she approaches to strike up a conversation, the little girl takes off her clothes, as she does when she feels inspired, and continues to solve mathematical equations. Noticing other pupils heading that way, fearing misunderstanding, he decides to take the girl to her room. After a brief discussion about why the girl is unclothed, Kamido asks her to get dressed, to which she replies that she cannot do it alone. So he helps her, and afterwards, the girl introduces herself as Hakua. Kamido introduces himself and asks her if she didn't recognize him from the orientation meeting about the commoners the day he arrived at the academy, to which she replies in the negative, as she was in his lab. Afterwards, Hakua's stomach growls, and Kamido decides to cook her a special ramen recipe. Although she is initially reluctant, he eventually manages to convince her, and after tasting the food, she likes it. Once satiated, Hakua falls asleep, and when Kamido tries to wake her up quickly, she suddenly gets inspired and starts scribbling equations on Kamido's desk while undressing again. At that moment, Eika enters the room and sees Kamido holding the little girl, who is not wearing trousers, and misunderstands everything, as he is holding the little girl's underwear in his hand. In the afternoon, Kamido accompanies Hakua while suggesting that she should learn to dress herself, until they finally arrive at her laboratory. After recounting what happened to the little girl's maid, she reveals that Hakua is a genius and that they should take pictures of what she writes in her moments of inspiration so as not to lose this valuable data, as it is of great importance due to Hakua's involvement in key mathematical fields for many companies around the world. After this conversation, the maid tells Hakua that she will prepare him something to eat, and Kamido informs her that it is not necessary, as he has already made the food for her. This surprises the maid, as the girl had consumed something that was not part of her usual diet. After this, Kamido takes his leave, but Hakua stops him by holding his sleeve and asks him to stay. He replies that she can visit him whenever she wants, and finally leaves. Afterwards, the maid talks to her colleagues about the girl's change of attitude towards the boy, and they share that, despite the girl's youthful appearance, which resembles that of a little girl, she is actually 14 years old. As a result of this revelation, they decide to keep a close eye on Kamido because of the possibility of an affair. The next day, Kamido, Eika and Ryaiko talk about their flower arranging class, in which Kamido does not excel. The blonde girl offers her help whenever she needs it. Then, the last member of the group is introduced, a tall girl with black hair who always carries a katana. Despite her determined attitude, she shows fear at the sight of an insect and tries to eliminate it with her sword, which, in the eyes of the other girls, looks like an attack on Kamido. Although he tries to clarify that he was not attacking, the black-haired girl decides to keep up the facade and calls him an insect, threatening him. She introduces herself as Karen and proceeds to attack Kamido. After dodging some of the cuts, Kamido irritates Karen, who performs a whirlwind technique that does not affect Kamido but cuts the uniforms of the surrounding girls, leaving them in their underwear. Soon after, Kamido's costume is also torn, leaving her in her underwear. This incident embarrasses all the girls and leads Karen to continue attacking Kamido as an indecent man. Faced with Karen's persistence, he decides to stop her by force, resulting in both of them being left naked, as their pants are also cut off. After this peculiar confrontation, Karen asks about the strength of the commoners, to which Kamido replies that he is the weakest. Doubting the skills of his sword style after losing to the supposedly weaker one, Karen challenges Kamido to a rematch. However, this time, her clothes are also cut off, leaving her in her underwear. Convinced of the abysmal difference in power, she decides to become Kamido's apprentice. Later, in the school corridors, the girls observe Kamido as the one who managed to turn Karen into his maid. 
In the room, Aika shares with Kamido her plan to organize a party to become the most popular girl in the class. Kamido finds the plan good, but points out that they will need a lot of phones to invite the other girls. At that moment, Hakua suddenly appears and offers to make the phones in his lab. Aika, noticing the closeness between the little girl and Kamido, experiences some envy. Karen enters the room surprised to see the girl in Kamido's arms, showing admiration for Hakua. After a brief conversation, Kamido asks Karen why she is there, and she replies that, as she had told him before, she belongs to him now. They decide to spend as much time together as possible until she is strong enough to defeat him. The conversation is interrupted by Aika, who asks Kamido why he is nice to everyone but her. He replies that it's because she's a bit of a tsundere. Aika, despite denying it, mentions that they're on club time and suggests that the other two girls should leave. A little jealousy escapes her, and upon realizing this, she is embarrassed and leaves the room to give a shout before returning. Just then, a maid delivers a package just in time, and inside the box are the phones Hakua had asked for. Aika thanks the little girl and offers to take a picture. After trying to take a picture of the three of them, Karen shyly reveals that she wants a picture too, feeling a little embarrassed to admit it. The next day, Riaiko and some girls invite Kamido to a tea party in Riaiko's room. However, Aika quickly appears and reminds Kamido that she cannot attend. When the other girls ask Aika, Aika, being shy, does not answer and, grabbing Kamido's arm, drags him away. In the hallway, she reminds him that they have a club meeting and Kamido mentions that the plan wasn't that urgent. In the end, he gives in and apologizes to Riaiko as he had plans. Later, the girl is in her room with her friends, commenting on the apparent closeness and bonding between Kamido and Aika. Meanwhile, Kamido and Aika are in the former's room thinking about what kind of party to throw. Kamido suggests serving amiabo and explains that it is a food that students usually buy after class, quickly convincing Aika. At the same time, Riaiko continues to talk to her classmates about Kamido and Aika's closeness. Due to jealousy, especially after one of her friends suggests that they might be boyfriend and girlfriend, Riaiko feels very bad, screams and runs out of the room crying. Later, in the classroom, Kamido notices Riaiko's friend crying and finally decides to go over to see if he can solve the problem. Later, Riaiko is crying on her bed, and Kamido asks her if they could talk about the problem. However, she replies that it's something she can't discuss with him, so Kamido asks her if the problem is related to him. Embarrassed, Riaiko opens the door to the room to deny it. After a while, they share a cup of tea while she tells him what happened and expresses her regret for shouting at her friend. Kamido decides to take action to resolve the situation. Back in his room, Aika is waiting for him and is already aware of everything, as she has been spying on him. Together they decide to redirect the party they had planned to make Riaiko happy. Although Aika proposes the idea a little reluctantly, Kamido realizes that she really is a good girl when she sees that it's something she wants to do. Upon expressing this to her, Aika headbutts her and leaves the room in embarrassment. On the day of the party, Kamido gathers all the girls in the class and explains that they are about to have an extracurricular plebeian experience. At that moment, Riaiko enters the classroom dressed as a normal girl, which surprises the rest of the classmates, who admire her style of clothing and hairstyle. Riaiko then takes out a mobile phone and sends a message, scaring one of the girls by vibrating her desk. She then asks them all to open their desks, as inside they will find a mobile phone for each of them. He briefly explains how it works and apologizes to all of them for their attitude, as well as personally to Ki, the friend he argued with. They make up and take a selfie together. After explaining how mobiles work, they all start taking pictures. After the party is over, Riaiko thanks Kamido for the gesture he made to help her solve her problem. At that moment, when it seems that Riaiko is going to propose, Kamido tells her that the idea was not hers but Aika's, as she wanted to have a party but preferred to help her. Hearing this, Riaiko, out of jealousy, misunderstands Kamido's words and, crying, runs off to the boy's room, where her friend is waiting for him. Seeing Aika, he tells her that he despises her, which makes her angry, as she doesn't understand why he would say that to her when he went out of his way to throw a party so that she could reconcile with her friend. Afterwards, they start fighting over Kamido's bed, insulting each other and expressing their feelings, creating a bad relationship between the two of them. Meanwhile, Kamido could only stare at their thighs rubbing against each other. When he finally decides to stop them, they throw a cushion in his face, causing him to fall, and they both become worried and stop fighting. Later, after Riaiko leaves the room, Kamido and Aika talk about Aika's past. It is revealed that Aika used to be like the other girls, but in fourth grade she became seriously ill 
and experienced an intense fever. When she woke up, she began to think differently, as if some of her memories had disappeared. Eika mentions that she doesn't mind the argument with Ryaiko, as she is satisfied with things as they are and can enjoy Kamido's games and manga. At that moment, Karen and Hakua enter the room to hand in an application to join the commoners' club. Soon after, Ryaiko returns to the room to express her desire to join the club as well. Although Eika initially does not want the other girls to join, after a brief conversation about her motives, she returns to arguing while little Hakua strips and scribbles on the walls, watched by Karen. All this happens just as Kyuju enters the room with a giant pair of scissors, misunderstanding the situation when he sees Kamido and causing Kamido to try to convince her that he likes chunky men, surprising the rest of the girls who are not expecting it. The next day, Kamido's friend Hani participates in a radio show. It is revealed that she is a recent idol and voice actress. After the show ends, she goes into the washroom, annoyed with Kamido for praising her voice in a way that she finds irritating. Meanwhile, she reads Kamido's message on her phone indicating that everything is going well at the academy. Later, Kamido wakes up next to Hakua, who sleeps naked next to him. When she wakes up, Hakua confesses that she is hungry, and together they prepare a potato cake. During the cooking, Kamido appreciates Hakua's effort. Then inspiration strikes Hakua again, who, naked, begins to doodle on the walls of the room. Once the food is ready, the two enjoy their lunch. Hakua comes up with riddles, but as he overanalyzes them, he becomes confused as he searches for more complex answers. Kamido shares some riddles, surprising Hakua with their simplicity. Later, Kamido accompanies Hakua to her laboratory, where the girls made notices her unusual reaction in Kamido's presence. As they say goodbye, Hakua expresses her wish to stay with Kamido who assures her that they can meet again the next day. Arriving at Kamido's room, Kamido discovers a stuffed animal that bears a strong resemblance to him. When Hakua realizes this, he is ashamed and locks himself in his room. In the evening, Ryaiko, Karen and Eika meet in Ryaiko's room to enjoy a cup of tea, while discussing the apparent closeness between Hakua and Kamido. They consider that the girl is constantly standing next to him, and when Hakua feels that Kamido ignores her, she chooses to undress and scribble on the walls to get his attention. They discuss some of the things that make them jealous about how Kamido treats Hakua. To prevent future problems, they agree to talk to the little girl, waiting for her in Kamido's room at her usual visiting time. At that time, Hakua comes in looking for Kamido, and when he finds out that she is not there, he prepares to leave. However, Karen blocks her way and suggests that it is not always necessary for Kamido to be present to have fun, as they are friends and can enjoy activities together. Despite attempts to integrate her, Hakua immerses herself in reading a manga, ignoring the tea and pastries offered to her. After several attempts at interaction, Ryaiko calls Kuryu the maid to bring Hakua's favorite food, finally getting Hakua to agree to eat. Then, Hakua, inspired, starts doodling on the wall while undressing, and the girls try to stop her without much success. Later, Hakua falls asleep, and the girls reflect on Kamido's daily experiences with the little girl. They find that they are calmer in comparison. Just then, Hakua's maid arrives to take her away. After waking her up and noticing Kamido's absence, the little girl shares that she has spent the day with her friends, which makes the girls happy. Before leaving, Hakua poses a riddle she read with Kamido, and Eika answers correctly, surprising the little girl. The next day, Kamido entertains himself by playing a dating game on the Nintendo, where the female character bears a striking resemblance to his friend Hani, whom he voiced. While flirting with the character in the game, Eika enters the room and he explains that her friend is the character's voice actress. Eika decides to try the game for a while, becoming surprised and focused, even blushing, making a close connection with the game's avatar. During this time, a communique sounds over the academy's loudspeakers, requesting Kamido's presence in the president's office. Aker remains focused on the game and decides to stay in the room reading until Kamido returns. While in the room, Rieka arrives and notices that each manga has a girl depicted on the cover, which leads to a brief discussion about Aka's attitude. Eika decides to leave to avoid being bothered any further by Ryaiko, the delegate, who comments that it is better for Eika to leave so that when Kamido returns, they will be alone. Eika reconsiders leaving and chooses to pick up a manga, but the focus returns to the girls on the covers. They wonder why all the books are like that, concluding that Kamido is very interested in the girls. After talking about the characters and their favorites, Eika decides to get something to eat. A particular drink catches their attention and after some indecision about what to do with it, they decide to try it. Surprised by the fizz, they both spit out the liquid, becoming soaked. 
they decide to take off their uniforms, leaving them in their underwear. And while arguing about how to fold Aika's clothes, they end up in an awkward situation on the bed, discussing Ryaiko's breasts. At that moment, Kamido enters, misreading the situation. A few days later, Kamido finds himself talking to the director, who informs him that the construction of the site for the field trip has been completed. In response to Kamido's curiosity about the destination of the field trip, Kyuju reveals that he has created a theme park called Shomingland. This park is intended to allow the young ladies to experience the culture of the commoners firsthand. They explain to Kamido that their presence at the park is essential to teach the girls about the customs of their village and how to behave in various real-world situations. Although again warned, with a threat to his integrity, not to try anything inappropriate with the girls, Kamido accepts, remembering his identity as a lover of men. With this, the long-awaited journey begins. Once the group arrives at their destination, inside the bus, Riaiko and her friends decide to go ahead to explore the theme park. Eika, on the other hand, intending to surprise the others when they order the food, reviews to herself what she plans to order, trying to show confidence. Kamido, however, observes her somewhat hesitantly and worriedly, but encourages her, assuring her that she will succeed. As they enter a room, a projector is turned on and a video welcoming them to Shomingland begins to play. Simultaneously, the room, which functions as a giant elevator, takes them to an observation deck from which they can see a completely normal city. This view surprises Kamido, who was expecting something different. However, the pupils react with great excitement, because for them, life in the city is a completely new experience. After the girls are amazed even by simple things, such as a pedestrian crossing, Kyuju tells them that they will go to the first attraction, which is a reference to McDonald's. They are explained that they must place their orders at the counter, wait standing until their orders are ready, and pick them up themselves when they are called. This causes confusion, as they think they will have to wait a long time for the food to be cooked. But Kyuju explains to them the speed of service at such restaurants. When it's time to order, everyone is nervous. Aker remembers what she practiced and decides to order a teriyaki burger combo with Cola Zero. However, due to her nerves, Ryaiko steps forward and approaches the counter. After a small misunderstanding, Kyuju steps in to explain and shows them the menu. Kamido, noticing Aika's hesitation, comes over and helps her by recommending what to order to Ryaiko. Afterwards, Karen chooses the combo that includes a doll. After everyone has placed their orders, Kamido notices that Aika, instead of taking the opportunity to socialize with the others, has sat alone at a separate table. To remedy this, he sits down between them and begins to eat his hamburger. As she takes a bite, she is surprised by the incredible taste and is frustrated that hamburgers are not usually this delicious. Kamido's reaction surprises her classmates, while Aker remains with a somewhat sad expression. Meanwhile, at the academy, Hakua goes to look for Kamido, but her maid intercepts her and informs her that they are on a field trip. This news saddens her a little. Meanwhile, the class is in a game room with machines, including those with claws to catch stuffed animals. Ryaiko manages to get one, to the applause of the other girls. Although Kamido reflects on how good Aika was at the dance game, she realizes that her classmates would rather enjoy the stuffed animals. She tries to encourage Aika, but the twins ask Kamido to teach them how to use the claw machines. Aika decides to go buy some juice, and Kamido shows them how to use the machines. Afterwards, all the girls want to learn, and when they return to the dance area, Aika is not there. They ask Kamido about a dance machine, and he explains that it is a game where they must follow the movements on the screen to earn points. Aika returns and demonstrates how to play, gaining the attention and admiration of the class. After the dance, Aika is embarrassed by the attention, but all the girls ask her to teach them how to play, fulfilling her desire to be popular. Meanwhile, Karen enjoys cuddling a puppy and expressing her happiness at its adorable presence. It's time to order drinks, and Aika impresses everyone by ordering a coffee with one of the most complicated names. Ryaiko watches her with a mixture of joy that she is finally getting what she wanted, but also a touch of jealousy. Once everyone has their coffees, some of the girls wonder what the little hole in the lid is for. They come to the conclusion that it's where you drink it, so Aika decides to demonstrate. However, as the coffee is very hot, she burns her tongue. Although she worries her companions a little, she reassures them that she is fine. Meanwhile, Karen continues to chase the puppy and Kamido asks if they are using the mobiles they were given, prompting her colleagues to ask Aika for her number so they can exchange messages. In the meantime, Hakua keeps Kamido's stuffed animal in a kind of bag. Later, the class goes shopping and Aika explains to the other girls that torn trousers are part of the current fashion and are not really damaged. 
Kamido, noticing that her friend is establishing a good relationship with the others, is relieved. On his way, he meets Karen, who is examining a set of clothes she likes. Despite her seemingly indifferent attitude towards fashion, Karen tries to fold the clothes awkwardly when she notices Kamido watching her. He suggests that the shop manager will take care of it, which surprises Karen when she realizes she is being watched. Kamido encourages her to try on the outfit if she really likes it, and she, in a fit of shyness, pulls out her katana and threatens him. Kamido reminds her that he has already beaten her once, which scares her a little. He then suggests that she try on the outfit, and after some misunderstanding, Karen agrees. Seeing her in the outfit, Kamido compliments her, telling her she looks beautiful, and falls in love with her legs because of her fetish. Despite Karen's initial lack of confidence, Kamido corrects her and asks her to, from now on, let him see her when she dresses like that, which embarrasses Karen, who hits him and runs away in shame. During the night, Eika, who has received a message on her phone, shares a room with Riaiko. Although the two don't get along well, they argue about being a nuisance to each other by sharing a room. Although Riaiko claims that she hates Eika, she would actually like to be good friends. Afterwards, Eika asks Riaiko to read her a message she wants to send to the rest of the class, explaining why she has been distant until now. She wants Riaiko to correct it, as she values her opinion as the most popular girl in the class. Riaiko agrees, and after reading the long and heavy message, suggests some corrections. Finally, the message expresses that due to her outspoken nature and past problems with friends, Eika preferred to keep to herself so as not to upset or bother anyone. Now, however, she wishes to be friends with everyone and thanks Riaiko for helping her to integrate with the rest of the class. The next day, as usual, Kyuju wakes Kamido up. At that moment, he wonders whether she really hates him as much as she pretends to, even though she does her homework. Later, at breakfast, the girls invite Eika to join them for lunch. Both Kamido and Riaiko are happy to see that things are going well for her. Afterwards, Eika and Kamido meet at the lifts, where he congratulates her on integrating with the others. Eika thanks him for his help, acknowledging that without him she wouldn't have achieved anything. Kamido mentions that with this, the commoners club comes to an end, as his goal was to make Eika popular, and now that he has succeeded, the club is no longer needed. These words sadden Eika, and at that moment the lifts arrive, separating each to their respective floors. However, Eika is left somewhat depressed. Later, Kamido finds himself in one of the hot baths, and at that moment the girl reappears. They both feel embarrassed, as they are without clothes, only covered by a towel. Kamido is surprised because the girls went to the hot baths the day before. The girl explains to him that she decided to come back today, and at that moment her companions enter. To avoid misunderstandings if they see him, Kamido decides to dive under the water, but because he is doing it so fast, he needs to come out quickly to get some air. The girl covers him with her body so that her friends can't see him. Meanwhile, Kamido can't stop admiring her friend's thighs. Her friends, noticing her blushing, ask her if something is wrong and she almost reveals that it's Kamido's fault, but he manages to shut her up by covering her mouth. Her friends are puzzled by the way Eika's hand looks, but in the end they decide that maybe it was because of the steam and that they had an optical illusion. They then ask her what is going on with Kamido, as she had mentioned him, and also comment that they have always been very close. They ask her to explain what kind of relationship they have, to which she replies that she doesn't really know. Meanwhile, Kamido, who is still underwater, starts to run out of oxygen again and inadvertently ends up grabbing the buttock of one of Eika's friends. The girl is embarrassed and asks him to stop playing. To stop Kamido, she elbows him in the face, causing him to faint underwater. After the girl's retreat, Eika notices that her friend is unconscious. She pulls him out of the pool and performs cardiopulmonary resuscitation. At that precise moment, two of her friends return and find them in that position, misinterpreting the situation and believing that they are actually kissing. When Kamido wakes up, Kyuju, as usual, informs him about a meeting in the classroom at 10 o'clock. As he walks through the corridors, he notices the girls looking at him strangely, and when he asks Eika, she reveals the situation that has arisen. Karen, jealous, punches him and runs away. In the afternoon, Eika explains the situation to the club girls in Kamido's room. They discuss whether they should clear up the misunderstanding with the rest of the class. When Kamido enters, Eika decides that it is better to wait a little longer. However, noticing Riaiko's satisfaction with the situation, they begin to argue heatedly, expressing their supposed hatred for each other. The next morning, a maid's meeting is held before the start of classes. On the way out, Kyuju, during the exercise of one of the pupils, picks up the towel that she drops on the floor. It is revealed that, 
Despite her privileged status, Kyuju belongs to a high-status family and her role as a maid is unusual for someone of her position. After evading a few questions from the student, she leaves and goes to Kamido's room. Finding him asleep, she leans over and kisses him on the mouth. A few seconds later, Kamido wakes up and receives Kyuju's daily comment. A couple of hours later, Eika and Kamido are chatting about the belief that commoners can predict the future. Eika shows him an app on her phone that makes predictions and makes a reference to Sailor Moon. After making a prediction, Eika claims that the app has got everything right. Kamido playfully mentions that he can guess her lucky color and has her dress in green, even putting on a mask and putting bean branches in her hands, indicating that dancing will bring good luck following a commoner custom. At that moment, Hakua, Karen and Ryaiko enter, surprised to see Eika's peculiar dance. After discussing the app, they each ask Kamido to look at their futures. The app predicts that Ryaiko will be successful in administrative jobs, Hakua will be a scholar and artist, and Karen, initially skeptical, decides to try it out. The application suggests that Karen is serious and aloof, but very passive in love, and her charisma is her outstanding quality. Karen tries to deny it, but her companions agree that the app has got it right. After a few more predictions, Karen finds a compatibility test app and all the girls want to try it with Kamido. Theka is the first and gets an 80% compatibility, making her very happy. Then it's Ryaiko's turn, who gets 90%, teasing Eika a bit. Hakua gets 50%, but decides not to make a big deal out of it. When it's Karen's turn, she gets 0%, which makes her angry and threatens Kamido with her katana. After correcting a mistake, the score is 100%, and the app suggests that Karen will attack more aggressively from tomorrow. Although initially embarrassed, Karen accepts that the app cannot always be trusted. The argument between Ryaiko and Eiko resumes, and Karen intervenes, pointing out that competing for luck is sad. The three girls end up arguing, and Kamido, seeing Hakua hungry, asks her to prepare a potato cake, and they both leave. The next day, Kamido wakes up with his maid by his side, repeating the same daily routine. He ponders whether he is trapped in a constant cycle. When questioned as to why she watches him sleep, the maid remains silent and simply tells him that there is no rule forcing her to respond and that her presence is part of her duties as a maid. After some more discussion, Kamido suggests that she doesn't need to wake him up, as her phone has an alarm function. She offers him several options, such as breaking his phone, waking him up by skating on it, or continuing with the current routine. Afterwards, Kamido hides in a corridor while enjoying videos on his phone, and runs into Karen. The blushing girl remembers the directions on the app and surprises Kamido with an attack with her katana to demonstrate her skills. Realizing that she has managed to cut the jacket in the arm area, she offers to sew it up and takes him to her room. As he watches, Kamido notices the simplicity of Karen's room, who explains that those who follow the way of the sword do not need superfluous ornaments, for simplicity is a strength. She then offers him tea and fetches his sewing tools. During this time, Kamido notices some adorable bunny decorations and Karen comments that she feels his gaze, which makes her uncomfortable. Karen asks him to turn around while she undresses, and when he asks her to do it again, she is dressed in the clothes they bought together days before. While sewing the sleeve, Kamido praises Karen's skill and tells her that she would make an amazing wife, which deeply embarrasses her. Later, she realizes that she also cut off his shirt and asks him to take it off to fix it, but Kamido refuses to stay half-naked. Although Karen feels uncomfortable taking it off, she observes the differences between male and female bodies, not noticing anything special, and not understanding how Kamido could be strong enough to defeat her. She begins to underestimate herself, but Kamido praises her for her efforts and tells her that she has moved him, as she has developed something incredible with so much effort, considering it beautiful. These words deeply affect Karen, making her blush. After that, Ryaiko, Hakua and Eika enter the room to find that it is empty, which is strange to them, as they had heard that both of them were there. It turns out that Kamido and Karen had hidden inside the wardrobe. Kamido doesn't understand why they are hiding until he notices Karen's bottom, which causes her to blush and lose her balance, falling onto her breasts. Finally, the wardrobe door collapses, misreading the situation for her three friends. When Eika picks up the phone and sees two men doing martial arts poses, Kamido improvises by saying that it is a method of clairvoyance and that he is reading Karen's fortune. So Eika puts him in a headlock. In the evening, Hakua contemplates her meal and remembers that the compatibility application was not very favorable for Kamido, which leaves her somewhat depressed. At that moment, her maid comes in and asks her why she hasn't eaten, noticing that she has drawn Kamido's face on her plate. 
Realizing that she also has a stuffed animal of him, she begins to think that Hakua might have fallen in love. The maid then goes to talk to the other maids, who are excited to learn that the girl is in love and come up with a plan to bring Kamido closer to Hakua. The next day, in Kamido's room, he meets with the girls to talk about maid cafes and explains that they are cafes where the waitresses play the role of maids. Aker recalls that he had mentioned to her that commoners do not have maids, even though they appear in some manga. Kamido clarifies that the maids in manga are fictional characters and that in the real lives of commoners there are no maids like the ones who work in those places. This confuses Aka, and Kamido explains that maids in maid cafes are more a commoner's fantasy or wish. He tells them that, upon arriving at the academy and discovering the existence of maid cafes, he was excited by the idea. After sharing her interest in maids, Ryaiko decides to book a session at the cafe. When Kamido arrives at the place, he finds his friends dressed in maid uniforms and acting like storytellers. Ryaiko calls him master, asks him to take a seat and asks him what he wants. Aika, seeing how determined Ryaiko is, gets a little nervous and comments that it's all a bit strange. Kamido assures her that it's just an act and asks the rest of the girls if they find anything strange, to which they reply in the negative. Then, asking Kamido what they should do next, he explains that maids for commoners must listen to the customer's requests and serve them with love. Although the girls don't quite understand, Kamido stages a few poses of what maids usually do, but they find him ridiculous and decide to turn away. Meanwhile, from the door, the real maids in charge of Hakua observe them, discovering Kamido's interest in the maids. Motivated by this information, they make a plan. Back in the cafeteria, Kamido asks for an omelette, and the girls continue with their performance, this time trying to serve him the food with love, although they are embarrassed by it. Hakua, a burden of entertainment, plays rock-paper-scissors with Kamido. After this, Ryaiko asks what they should do next, and he mentions that they also sing and dance. Ryaiko, enthusiastic about singing, prepares to perform the Ave Maria. However, her performance is terrible, to the point of shaking the building and breaking the glass in the cafeteria. In response to Aika's criticism of her poor performance, they begin to argue while Karen takes care of Hakua. The real maids arrive to clean up the mess and Kamido points out to them to pay attention, as their behavior differs significantly from that of the maids in the cafes. She explains that, unlike traditional maids, the maids in the cafeteria do not take care of tasks such as cleaning, dressing or waking people up in the morning, they simply offer a special service when it comes to serving food. The girls are a little surprised, as they see no reason to call this a maid. Some time later, while Kamido is resting on a bench in the garden, he meets Hakua's maid and thanks her for sorting out the earlier disaster. He expresses his admiration for the royal maids, to which she proposes to go and see them in action. Delighted, Kamido accepts. Once in Hakua's lab, he watches the little girl work, and when she goes into her creative trance, the maids come in to take notes and tidy up the room. Noticing Kamido's presence, the women rush to dress Hakua. After this, he praises the girl's impressive work. The maid takes them to another room, which turns out to be a huge sandbox designed for Hakua to clear his mind. They begin to play together, and after a while, they notice that the maids keep watching them, justifying it as their free time. They continue to spend time together, and despite the constant stares of the women, they manage to build a small sand house. When lunchtime arrives, he decides to go to a staff cafeteria. Kamido notices that, even though it has been a while, the maids surround him and stare at him constantly. They excuse their presence by saying that they are also going to eat. They seem to be trying to make the date between Hakua and Kamido work, and with excuses such as sharing plate, spoon and glass due to accidents that break or dirty everything. Kamido gives in and goes along with the situation he proposes. The maid even comments that they look like a couple drinking like that, making Kamido notice Hakua's tenderness, something he hadn't noticed before as he was used to looking down on her. At that moment, Kyuju enters, and the frightened maids stand at attention before her. Kyuju reports that she has received an urgent request from a company, and, finding no one in the laboratory, the inquiry came to her. The other maids rush off to get back to work, and Kamido offers Hakua to leave the place, holding out her hand. However, she, embarrassed, quickly leaves. Later, Kamido apologizes for staying so long, to the point of irritating Kyuju. The maid assures him that it's no problem and asks him if he now has a better understanding of his job. 
However, because the evening was an ongoing attempt to arrange a date with Hakua, Kamido honestly admits that he is not sure how a maid's job works. Nevertheless, he points out that, thanks to this time, he has been able to discover other facets of Hakua's personality. This comment cheers the maid up, and that night, together with the others, they celebrate the supposed success of the date. It is revealed that Kyuju was the one who chose Kamido as a candidate and that there was another boy but she talked about it. They all express their gratitude to Kyuju for bringing the right boy. The next day, Kimito calls Eika to go to her room alone, causing some embarrassment for the girl, who thinks it might have romantic overtones. Once Eika is in the room, Kimito invites her to sit on the bed and hands her a present. Upon opening it, she discovers that it is a yellow suit, which Kimito assures her is very popular among the commoners and will be her secret weapon to become the most popular girl in school. Seizing the moment, Eika asks her a question that has been on her mind, the meaning of gets. Kamido replies that it is a greeting between friends common among commoners. Although Eika becomes suspicious, given Kamido's history of pranks and deception, he seeks to convince her by showing her a video of Dandy Sakano, a very popular man who wears the same yellow suit and performs the gets gesture. He shows her numerous internet searches and fans imitating the gesture to prove to her that it is real. Finally, Eika is convinced and, after practicing the gesture in a comical manner, Kamido is ready to tell her that it was all a joke from the beginning. But, just before he can get the promised punch, Eika runs off to spread the gesture throughout the academy. As Kamido runs after Eika, upon opening the door, he bumps into Kyuju, ending up under her skirt and looking at her thighs. After a brief conversation where the maid, upon seeing Eika, thought Kamido was engaging in perverted activities with cosplay, and he explains that this is not the case, Eika meets Ryaiko in the hallway, who looks at her strangely due to the outfit she is wearing. After explaining that the outfit is worn by the gagman dandy Sakano, a very famous man among commoners and the inventor of gets, Ryaiko is jealous that Kamido has given Eika a gift, to which Eika suggests that she could also use one. The two continue to talk, as Ryaiko thought that the gets was Eika's invention. She explains that no, it is something used by more than 780,000 people all over the world, surprising Ryaiko. After hearing this, Ryaiko also wants to try it and start practicing the gesture. Once they manage to do it perfectly, consider the idea of teaching it to the rest of the girls. Meanwhile, Kamido is looking for Eika around the academy, and when he arrives at the classroom, he discovers that he is too late. All the girls are dressed in yellow costumes and performing the gets gesture. Later, back in Kamido's room, Ryaiko, from the corridor, overhears through the door a conversation between Kamido and a friend on the phone. During the call, Kamido mentions that he is getting tired of the academy because of the lack of men and the difficulties in relating to girls. Upon hearing this, Ryaiko feels quite bad and meets with the rest of the group to share the situation. Together, they decide to come up with a plan to prevent Kamido from leaving the academy. Eika suggests the idea of becoming boys to attract Kamido's attention and prevent her from leaving, although her classmates do not fully understand the proposal. However, Eika concludes that they should adopt masculine behavior, taking Kamido as a reference, as he is the only male figure they are familiar with. They copy Kamido's habit of constantly looking at thighs and teasing, and recall his predilection for muscles. They ask a maid to bring a muscle suit, but having only one, they must decide by rock-paper-scissors who will wear it. Eika wins the draw. When they try on the suit, they all agree that it doesn't suit him, so they decide to adjust it to match Kamido's style. They add elements that will make him look more masculine, such as a samurai ponytail symbolizing virility, a bow tie, and, finally, a suit. They also consider the need for a more masculine scent and, after reflecting on masculine scents, decide to use yakiniku seasoning to add a hint of meaty aroma. Once they were all ready, they went to Kamido's room. Upon seeing them, Kamido thought they looked ridiculous and asked them why they smelled like meat seasoning, noticing strange behavior from them. They explained that they heard that he was considering leaving the academy because of the lack of male classmates, so they put on this performance to convince him to stay. Kamido assured them that they need not worry, and informed them that he would remain at the school. After a few days, Kamido found himself in the afternoon at the school entrance, greeting several female students. Upon arriving at the classroom, he bumps into Ryaiko, who was replenishing the chalk to ensure that the teachers were comfortable teaching. When asked why he had gone to the classroom at that time, Kamido mentions that he forgot his pencil case, which surprises the girl, as he is not usually so absent-minded. As they watch the sunset through the window with the light fading, Kamido notices her friend's beauty. They talk about how the sky is perceived differently in the city. Later, Ryaiko suggests a date in disguise, 
pretending to help her improve her flower arranging class. She also asks him to call her by her first name instead of her surname from now on. The next day, the club members meet to decide on an activity to do. Riaiko reminds Kamido not to forget what was discussed earlier. This mention arouses Aika's curiosity, but Riaiko tells them it is a secret, increasing Aika's desire to find out what they are planning. Karen also joins the conversation, seemingly disinterested, but in reality, she is also eager to know the secret, although her friend insists that she cannot reveal anything. At that moment, some maids enter the room looking for Riaiko and ask her to attend the headmistress's office. Kamido is informed that they are also looking for him, which puzzles the group. The girl's relatives, Masayami and Hauko, have arrived at the academy. Masayami shows her anger that she cannot allow a boy to enter the female academy for the safety of her sister. The headmistress explains that Kamido has been carefully selected to avoid trouble. Masayami talks to her sister, suggesting an obvious obsession. She then acts aggressively towards Kamido, not wanting him to get close to her sister. Riaiko, annoyed by his behavior, demands an apology from Kamido or threatens to stop talking to him. Kyuju intervenes to explain that Kamido poses no threat to the girls because of his sexual interest in men's muscles. But this does not reassure Masayami, who considers him a pervert. After a brief discussion, Riaiko's mother addresses the situation gravely. It is revealed that the discussions about her arranged marriage are over, and she must leave the academy to join her husband in a few days, as she will be marrying the son of an important family. This deeply saddens Riaiko, who looks at Kamido with shock and disorientation. Later, Kamido shares the news with her friends, and Eika explains that the academy was created to train the daughters of important families, so that the sons of other renowned families can look for wives. Kamido asks if they are really happy with this arrangement, but the girls lower their heads in response. He therefore proposes to break up Riaiko's marriage arrangement, as it clearly does not make her happy. Some time later, in the courtyard of the academy, Kamido and his friends meet Masayami again who asks them to quickly take out their phones to give them his email address, indicating that he wants to talk to them about something important. However, Masayami's mother appears at that moment, forcing him to obey and leave with her before they can share their mail. Later, the club members, not having Riaiko to decide on the activity, realize that they can't think of anything. Hours pass, the group notices the emptiness without their friend and, despite their attempts to deny it, even Aika becomes concerned and decides to call Riaiko, feeling that she cannot just walk out of the club. They discover that Riaiko's phone only works at school, but Hakua disables the limiter on the mobiles, turning them into normal phones. That night, Aika calls Riaiko and expresses her dissatisfaction with the situation, considering it unfair to disregard her feelings. Riaiko explains that it is her obligation and that she must comply with what her mother says. During the conversation, she mentions that, despite previous discussions, she now feels that they are distant and misses them. She suggests that maybe she visits the academy once in a while to say hello. Aika, annoyed, reminds her that, if she leaves, she will be left alone in gym class and on future excursions without a companion. She expresses her disagreement with the arrangement and, after hearing this, Riaiko confesses that she doesn't really want to leave the academy and that she wants to be with all her friends. However, she does not know what to do, and Aika assures her that they will find a way to solve this problem. The next day, Aika informs Kamido that she has spoken to Riaiko, who reveals that she does not want to leave the academy and does not want to move away from the people she loves. They both agree on the need to do something to avoid marriage. Karen and Hakua enter the room, sharing the idea of addressing the problem directly, as they noticed that Masayami was also not okay with the situation and was looking for a solution by talking to them. Hakua gets the email with the message, and after checking it, the group begins to make a plan. They decide to sneak out of the academy during the night, and although they are discovered by Kyuju, Kyuju, upon learning of their intentions without being told, chooses to turn a blind eye by asking if this is a commoner's club activity. Upon confirming this, Kyuju allows them to leave, as he is not involved in the matter. Once outside the school, they get into a sleek black vehicle driven by two muscular men, where Masayami awaits them. With a snap of their fingers, they set out to rescue their friend. On the way to Riaiko's mansion, Kamido asks Masayami why he is helping them. Masayami explains that while he cannot oppose his sister's betrothal as a member of the Arasugawa family, he can assist them in making the decision, as Riaiko's fate is in their hands. Arriving on a hill near the mansion and observing the overwhelming security and shield-wielding guards, Masayami suggests that perhaps someone informed his mother of their intentions, 
leading to a reinforcement of security. Aka examines the scene with binoculars and notices that the guards are carrying wooden swords. At this observation, Karen decides to take on the role of fighter, eager to test the opponent's strength. Karen charges at the guards with a powerful blow that sends dust into the air. She then employs a new technique to create a sizable hole in the wall, allowing Kamido and his friends to enter. However, seeing them surrounded, Karen urges them to move forward while she confronts the guards. She uses her whirlwind technique to strip all the guards of their clothes, leaving them naked. Kamido and his group advance, but their path is blocked by Takemiya, who engages Masayami in conversation before engaging in a melee, taking advantage of the distraction. Kamido, Hakua, and Eika infiltrate the mansion. In the corridors, they encounter drones, and now it is Eika who takes it upon herself to confront them. She uses a vase, throwing its pieces as projectiles to shoot down the drones. After this confrontation, they come across security doors that begin to close, but Hakua decides to go to the control room. Although she almost falls on the way, Kamido manages to hold her up and continues to move forward. The last door seems to close before they get there, but the muscular men who accompanied them in the vehicle appear to hold it, allowing Hakua to pass. After entering codes, they manage to open the doors again. Finally, they reach a room where a giant robot blocks their passage. Before the robot crushes them with its enormous size, Karen makes a shocking entrance wearing a samurai outfit with kitty ears. With an attack so powerful that it even makes all the robot's clothes disappear, they manage to defeat it. All Takemiya and Masayami continue their fight. Hakua hacks the previous drones and creates flying shoes for Kamido. With surprising speed, Kamido arrives at the room where they were about to arrange the marriage. Everyone in the room is surprised by his arrival, and the girl's mother politely asks him to leave, as they are busy with an important matter. However, Kamido responds by indicating his disagreement with the marriage. Riaiko's mother states that it is her daughter's will, but Kamido points out that she is only following the family rules. The woman tells him that a commoner like him would not understand the importance of such arrangements. In response, Kamido points out that, despite living in different worlds and sometimes not understanding each other, they have managed to be friends, proving that he is important to everyone in the commoner's club. Eika intervenes, suggesting that Riaiko should follow her heart, reminding her that they cannot force her to do something she does not want to do, as she is a precious friend. Despite the unanimous plea, Riaiko's mother stands firm, indicating that it is time for them to leave. Finally, Riaiko makes a decision and announces that she will leave the house. Her mother explains the consequences, she will lose the right to attend the academy, and become an ordinary girl without the ability to be in that exclusive school. Kamido assures her that there is no problem and that she will be able to live with him, freeing her from these restrictions. He offers her a different, but freer and better life. Thanking her mother, Riaiko chooses to stay on Kamido's side. Her father supports her decision. As for the parents of her future husband, they decide to forget the incident and act as if nothing has happened, as their son has decided to return to school after learning of Riaiko's inclinations. After leaving, Riaiko's mother laughs and assures her daughter that she will be able to marry whomever she wishes, filling her with joy. She then asks Kamido to be sure to take care of her daughter forever, although he does not fully understand the meaning of her words. When asked by her mother whether they will marry after her speech, Kamido realizes that it sounded like a declaration. This leads to a small conversation, during which her jealous friends try to intervene, as they all still want to have an affair with Kamido. Nasayami tries to hit him to keep him away from his sister, who immerses herself in reading a book about wedding planning. Back at the academy, Kamido apologizes to Riaiko for confusing her with his words, to which she replies that it's not important and reiterates that he should start calling her by her first name instead of her surname. When the rest of her friends come in, they start arguing about which of them will get Kamido. While Eika and Riaiko fight, Karen watches Hakua, who is undressing and scribbling on the wall. At the end of the afternoon, Kamido finds himself in the headmistress office with Kyuju. They discuss the prank he pulled, which has led to the whole academy becoming obsessed with the Getz craze. Later, the girls say goodbye, making the famous gesture characteristic of the prank. And so the anime ends.